Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing a um, piece inspired by Jen Hall and it's called Roll of Picasso. So Jen Hall is an artist who lives in Newcastle in Australia who has been doing some live um, lessons on Facebook and this is one of the lessons she did and it's called um, Roll of Picasso. Now if you go on to Pinterest and type in roller Picasso you will come up with a sheet of instructions of how to do this so basically what you do is um, you've got a dice you've got this sheet and you roll the dice so say number one so number one tells you what nose you're going to draw and it gives you a sample of a nose you can draw and if you roll a three it's going to be a different shaped nose so um, on the live lesson Jen went through and rolled the dice and you could choose what image you came up with. When you finish drawing all your pieces, then you just need to draw a simple um, shape to connect it all together to make your face shape. Now, there are lots and lots and lots of um, Picasso images, obviously available on the internet that you can use as references to do this. You can go to Pinterest and find the roll of Picasso. You can actually find, I got really excited because I found so many, you can roll a Matisse and roll a Miro and um, roll a Keith Harding. So any artist that you like, you probably will find um, a similar technique that you can use to replicate one of their art um, pieces in your art book. But one of the things, I suppose, I love Picasso. I love the cubist way of um, blocking in colours. And so I really had fun. So this um, isn't a particularly difficult piece to create, but it was just lots of fun. And it was, um, I suppose, more fun because I was following along with someone and had people talking in the background. So I felt like I was part of a, um, an art lesson. So one of the things that... Um, they were talking about as we were going along was um, mixing the colors so you can see how I've put my colors out of my palette I've got a light color and a darker color so I've got my light green and I've got darker green underneath it and basically what I'm doing is draw, um, painting in the block of the lighter color then going around the edge with the darker color and blending them together while they're still wet so I'm actually using two brushes which I don't use very often um, when I'm working now a word of caution when you're doing this, I sketch this out as I sketch most everything out with a Stabilo oil pencil. A Stabilo oil pencil is a water reactive pencil or a paint reactive pencil. So you can see down on the green part um, where I got too close to the edge, the black is actually bled in. Now you can use this to your advantage because it gives you instant shading. Um, but you know on your whites uh, not in white sorry well on your whites it would be an issue but sort of on your yellows and so on it, you might find it a little bit of an issue when you've got the the black bleeding in so just be really careful about what you choose to draw your um, original sketch out with as you go along so basically I'm just going along blocking in the colors and making sure that I use all the different colors um, I wish I'd used a brighter purple on this but the the wine color kind of worked in the end so it was it was okay um, but that's what this is all about sort of learning as you go along to um, see what you like and what you don't like and again there's no right or wrong to this um, you know you can do it in any way shape or form this would be a perfect perfect activity to do with kids um, it's so much fun to do and it's very easy for them to follow along with you don't have to use paint to do this either this would look just as good and again if you're doing it with kids um, with chalk pastels or um, oil pastels um, something that's easy to blend together you could use it with um, textures or felt tip pens if you wanted to um, that would work just as well um, and if you show kids how to water activate their um, textures or felt tip pens so you can get an almost watercolor look too that would be quite cool and it would also um, blend out the the harsher lines you might get with the texture so there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do this so you can see obviously I'm painting at super speed here uh, this I suppose all up took me a bit over an hour to to do 
Um, but, you know, if you've got something going on in the background, it, it's very relaxing to do because you really don't have, once you've sort of drawn in the original shapes, all you're doing is blocking in the color. So it becomes um, pretty simple to do. And once you've done the first few blocks of blending the colors together, again, you don't really need to think about it all that much because you've got those techniques down. Having the um, acrylic paints gives you that really intense color um, and it also gives you sort of a super opaque color as well. I would suggest if you were doing this, um, particularly if you're doing it with kids, using some better quality acrylic paints. Um, if particularly school teachers out there probably know what I'm talking about, but um, a lot of student grade acrylic paints, particularly the ones that you use at school, are really, really thin and um, translucent and they can be really, really frustrating to use because you really can't blend, blend them together very well. So uh, places like in, in Australia, I'm sure in America they've got fabulous places to buy lots of craft stuff too and probably a lot cheaper than it is in Australia. Um, but places like Spotlight and so on sell a really great um, range of basic um, acrylic paints that are still a step up from the um, poster paint type paints that you get for kids. So you can see while I seem to have a lot of paint out there I really don't have all that much and I am actually going to use it all up now in my use it up journal. So this is one of the ways I like to use my paint up in my use it up journal especially when I've got a few different colors out because I don't tend to put so many colors out at once when I'm painting and it's just to use my paintbrush and paint all the paint in and just use the um, brush strokes as the mic making in the background. So it's again really fun and relaxing to do. You don't need to think about it. You're just putting paint down on the page. And you can see I started off on the first page. I didn't have anything down on that page and this page already had color in the background and it just adds to it in the end. So I have that journal sit to one side and it's, you know, next time I get inspired I can use that page for something. So I'm just going in with my heat tool to dry that off. Obviously if you don't have a heat tool um, you could be really patient and just wait. Or you can maybe use a hair dryer um, to work on as well. So the next step that I'm doing is putting in quite a heavy black line just to really make this quite defined. Um, with how I'm doing it. Now I've found, um, I've done a few canvas paintings for my children in a similar style to this before. And I really love using these permanent markers with the chisel tip because they've, the permanent line that it makes on the page is actually super shiny and it just gives a really cool effect to the page. I was struggling a little bit with my pen because I didn't really leave my paint to dry long enough. To get a really good crisp um, line over everything by leaving your paint so it's really super dry you're going to get the best effect possible. You can sort of see me fighting a little bit with some of the edges. I'm having to go over them a few times just to make sure that I've got a nice black line around it. But you can see already just by putting that black line it just really pops everything out and makes everything sort of look contained and um, bright and happy. It really pops the colors out from the background. It also, and again, this is a really, you know, if you're working with kids to do this, it's really handy for them because painting up next to another color, sometimes you go over and it's messy and they really stress out about that. By using quite a thick marker over the top, that hides that really easily. So if you've got colors that have sort of blended over together you don't have a really clear deline delineation between the two colors um, this is a really great tr trick to use to help everything sort of stay separate. And you can see I'm going back and thicken thickening up some lines just until I'm happy with them and making sure that everything's sort of all um, done properly. There was a stage I'd forgotten to put one of the lines in so I had to go back and fix that up. With the eye on the left too just putting in those little um, eyelashes 
this is the black mica as well it helps sort of finish it off the final thing that I decided to do was to put some doodling in the um, areas of the paint itself and this just adds a bit of extra texture to the page so there's no rhyme or reason to what I chose to put in it the only thing I chose to do was to use similar colors to the colors I painted in the background so a light green over the light green an orange over the orange um, a sort of yellowy color over the yellow and so on and I'm just using dots lines um, loopy patterns over them um, the paint just to give some texture and while you can't see it here when you get to the close-ups you'll actually be, be able to see that really pop out from the background and it does make all the difference and I have to admit at this stage I'm um, I'd turned off the video that um, Jen had done I sort of followed along with most of it but I hadn't actually got to the end bit I sort of just went off my own little world because I was really into it and really enjoying it so I've got a feeling she used paint pens in some way shape or form in her final piece well I know she did but I'm not quite sure how she used them so I'm not sure if she used them like this over the entire piece to add texture or if she just used them in in certain spots so I will leave the link to Jen's page um, in the description box below so you can go and see her video and see how she did it and I'll also leave um, the link to um, the roll of caster on Pinterest so you can go and download your own sheet as well so in the close-up you can see the texture that paint pen um, gave to the background and it was just a really fun thing to do the other thing to finish it off I just put in some extra white highlights and put the catch-alls in the eyes of my painting um, having the catch-alls is really really important um, to bringing the eyes to life so I hope you enjoyed this quick um, flip through of Rolla Picasso please go and check out Jen's amazing artwork she does phenomenal stuff and um, check out the links and to all the other Rolla artists um, that you can find because there are lots and lots of fun if you've got kids at home this would be a great activity to do with them until next time bye for now